In North Central Washington, we have some amazing ways to enjoy the great outdoors. Trails abound through forest and foothills, from the Columbia River to the top of 7,000 foot peaks. Every sort of trail user on land and water, locals and visitors alike benefit from all these beautiful spaces year round. But here's the thing, this place you and I call home is gonna see a lot more pressure over the coming years. As it turns out, there are tons of folks out there who like to play outside just like us. And like it or not, the number of visitors and residents in North Central Washington is growing. If we wanna keep our outdoor spaces healthy through this increased impact, it's time for all the trail user organizations, land managers, and government agencies to come together and create a plan. Enter TREAD. TREAD stands for Trail Recreation, Education, Advocacy, and Development. And TREAD formed in order to help bring all the folks in the outdoor recreation world together. We have three main objectives. One, facilitate better communication of our regional outdoor recreation needs. Two, to carefully prioritize and develop new rec-related projects. And three, work with partners to make sure that our region's outdoor rec assets are wisely managed for future generations. We can be ready for the future. We can welcome everyone who wants to play outside here. And we can take care of our backyard now and for years to come. Thanks again for joining everybody. This is Danny Zwell, your host on the Rec Center Podcast. Today we got Matt Lyons, the Tread Guy. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if you've <laughs> not sure if you've heard too much about Tread. It's a newer nonprofit here in the Valley. He's going to tell us all about it and basically how it's changing the trail industry and how uh, we are incorporating many different different features and connecting different land managers, owners, uh, users to the trails. Matt, how are we doing? Doing well, man. I wish the smoke was gone, but it's nice to be here with you. Yeah, you know, we were just talking in the pre-interview. It's sad to say that 188 air quality is a good day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I want to jump right into it, Matt. Uh, okay. So how did Tread get started? Tell me a little bit about it. So back in 2014, there was a group of four or five of us that kind of were hanging out, got together and just said, man, if we could if we could somehow organize all the great outdoor rec opportunities that are that are here in the valley, wouldn't that be amazing? We'd get more done. And uh, that conversation just kept happening and how do we do that? And there was an opportunity to uh, work with uh, the port in Chelan Douglas County on an mm -hmm. outdoor rec economic impact study. And so we jumped on that and we actually pursued that study. That study uh, came out about a year later and showed that uh, there are millions and millions of dollars spent every year here in the Valley on outdoor rec. Uh -huh. At the same time, the Our Valley, Our Future um, initiative was happening and they, they actually named uh, outdoor rec organizational structure as one of their nine game changers. Uh -huh. So this confluence just kind of happened at the same time and we said, well, there really isn't anybody out there, so let's just make one. So we formed an organization, got a board of directors, started doing our policy governance work and uh, working on pursuing our nonprofit status. And uh, now we're a nonprofit organization called TREAD. Man, that's awesome. So I just want to, I want, I want to tell a quick story. So um, I, I interviewed Delcy Prophet a couple of weeks ago and she actually pointed me towards you. And I was like, man, why does that name sound so familiar? And uh, she brought up TREAD. And throughout March, up until maybe about a month ago, I've been hearing tread, tread, tread. You know, it's like, you got to check them out. Check out their app. They're doing some amazing things in the trail systems. Um, they got some great backing behind them. They're really engaged in the community. They're really, they're changing a lot mm -hmm. for the good. So I was like, man, that's, that's amazing. So when Delcy Prophet pointed me in your direction, you know, I couldn't wait to bring you on the show, hear more about it. And when we initially talked, I mean, it's solving so many issues. And not only that, um, my wife, Liz Zavala, also used to work with you. So um, right. in the Eastmont School District, which I thought was pretty cool. So for those, of, uh, for those that don't know much about trails, don't know much about the app, like, what can you tell them about it? Wow, that's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, let's give a shout out to Delcy. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's pretty amazing, right? Yeah, she is. 
I, uh, I convinced her to join our board of directors here last year, and it's been uh, a joy and a pleasure. And shout out to Liz too, right? So yeah. Yeah. Smart teachers. Cheers. Right? Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so narrow down that question for me a little bit. Yeah, so for those that don't know much about trails or maybe have used the trails here in the Valley, um, they never heard of Tread. Sure. Maybe they want to download the app. Maybe walk us through like um, what it's like to use the app, how it benefits everyone. Sure. Okay. So uh, we actually started this app process a couple of years ago, and the reason why we did that is because it it uh, the app meets our mission and vision as an organization, just in a digital form. So what we're all about is trying to cross pollinate all the outdoor rec groups into one spot. Mm -hmm. all the land managers into one spot. And so this, this app does that digitally, right? Yeah. So if you, uh, it doesn't matter what you do outside. If you run, paddle on water, pavement, dirt, snow, ride a horse, ride a motorcycle, doesn't matter, right? It's all in one spot. And so I think that's what sets this app apart. You know, there's a lot of apps that are out there and they're really good, but they're, they're usually uh, user group specific or one or two user groups. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you'll have a certain user group using this app and a completely different user group using that app and they don't really talk to each other. This is like trying to bring the whole community into one space because when we're all out there, we're all recreating on the same trails. Yeah. So that's what sets it apart a little bit. Um, it has so many features and so many different filters. I mean, you can plan a trip from your laptop. You can pull out the phone and look at it. There's filters for well right now there's filters for smoke and air quality so we can wow. we can decide like where am I going to take the family today well this canyon is less healthy than this canyon so maybe I'm going to go recreate there today gotcha. or you know dogs on leash dogs off leash you can filter for let's say I want to ride my horse today right yeah. just filter for that and then all the trails that are available to you filter out so it's it's kind of unique in that way from a user perspective yeah, and, and I'm just gonna mention something. So um, I went in, created my own profile. I'm nice. Like, logged in this morning, so I'm a I'm a tread user, and I saw your update six days ago saying uh, that you went to Mission Ridge and it was blue skies because you got over the inversion layer of smoke, which right. That's that's pretty sweet. You know, that would have been really good to know six days ago. <laughs> <laughs> right. To go for a run or wanted to go for a bike ride. Um, again, I'm a newer user. I just started using it. Um, but that, those are the kind of, um, like circumstances or those are the kind of things that you would want to know if you're a user on the app, right? Yeah, for sure. And, and the more people that are downloading this and using it, the better the information is going to be because it's user informed. Mm -hmm. So this is another thing that sets this app apart from other apps is that while you're out there, so you just downloaded the app, right? Let's say you take your new bike out for a ride. And excuse me, you come across a tree that's down. You're the first one on it. It just fell. You can actually just pull out the app right there, hit tree down, take a picture of it. It knows right where you are and it updates everyone immediately. So now everyone knows that tree's down. Or like in your example, everybody knew like that day, hey, if you want to get above the smoke, here's how. Yeah. So we've got different drop down menus for people to report what's going on out there so that we all learn. If the trail's too muddy, the parking lot's full, there's a tree down, I saw a snake, you know, not smoky, it is too smoky. If we're all out there recreating and we're all out there informing each other, we can have a better user experience before we even leave, right? Definitely. And um, I think one of the things that um, I saw online was saying that it's connecting with land managers and that you also mentioned that too, but also working directly with some of these bigger organizations, right? The ones that are right. monitoring the lands, the ones that are, um, uh, maybe developing trails or maintaining the trails or, you know, working on power lines that might be interfering with those trail systems. Is that right? Yeah. So we built in a, we built the back end for this app so that all the different land managers, land owners could have access to it in an easy kind of dashboard format. So it's mm -hmm. user friendly for them as well. So if I'm a, let's say I'm an employee of the forest service, I can go on the back end of the app and I can update any trail. I can turn it on, turn it off, make it active. I can, a power line goes down. I can turn off that segment of trail, oh, wow. right where the power line is, let people know there's a power line down there. 
for fire closures, it's instantly updating which trails are being closed for fires. When they're reopened, they'll instantly update when they reopen. Because right now, if you go on, you know, different websites, and this is no fault of the land managers, but, you know, some of their websites are, the information is pretty old. Sometimes yeah. years old. 2000. You, call, you know, like if you call their front desk and you're like, hey, I'm not from around here. What's trail XYZ looking like right now? Sometimes that person who answers the phone doesn't know. Yeah. So this way we can just send people to the place that has the most up-to-date information because we're all out there using it and we're all keeping it up to speed. Yeah. And just curious, so how did, how did land managers and let's just say, for instance, like the PUD and the Forest Service, how did they update those systems before to notify individuals? You know, it's it, it, as best as they could. <laughs> you know? So like, I mean, everybody has a website and maybe they have an app and they'll update that. But unless you and I are going to that for information, which we probably aren't, yeah, uh, you know, it's only as good as that. Plus it's only as good as the person updating it or the timeline in which they've updated it. And if you take a group like the Forest Service, I mean, it's a 4 million acre forest, right? Like, how do you keep track of everything that's going on on 4 million acres? You know, I can barely, I can barely, I can barely keep track of my closet. Right? <laughs> uh, you and I share that in common. <laughs> I mean, it, like the app solves so many issues and makes sense, um, you know, for the creation of it. it it's amazes me that it took this long to create something like what you're creating because it's so useful on so many different levels from, you know, the back end managers to the daily users to, you know, smoke and air quality to, you know, trees going down or wildlife, you know, interruptions. I just think that it's so practical and especially in such an outdoor rec focused Valley. Yeah. I mean, that's huge. And, um, well, we're hearing that from a lot of people as they as they get to know the app there and especially from other communities now i'm getting reached out by other communities around the state in other other states they're like hey why hasn't anybody done this before this is amazing blah, blah, blah. well the reason why is because it's a lot of work <laughs> i mean just app development is a lot of work from a workload standpoint yeah but because you have every single user group and every single land manager they have to all buy in, yeah. you know? So the reason why this, this got to happen is because Tread's doing that as an organization. We're getting all the land managers and all the user groups together in the same room. You know, oftentimes people don't know what their neighbors are doing, mm -hmm. you know, or other rec groups are doing. So this rec group might be doing some amazing stuff and this rec group is, but we're all working in silos. Or this land manager is doing something and they don't, their neighboring land manager has no idea, right? Yeah. If we can get everybody together in one spot, that's when efficiencies happen, communication happens, we're working together for the same projects. But to get all those people in one spot is hard. So as, as we did that as an organization, it was a lot easier to get that done in an app. Yeah. Right? So that's why, because every community is going to have to be ready for this because you can't just like, oh, I'll just go purchase this technology. Uh-huh. Not when it's disinformed by land managers and users, they have to buy in and be a part of it. So I think that's why nobody's done it before. Yeah. I think, I think that's what's going to keep it from spreading fast. But I do think it's going to spread because everyone that sees it is like, we need this in our community. Most definitely. So as it spreads across the state, you know, we'll have more and more trails. Our app will work no matter where we go. And yeah. it'll be great. It'll still take time, but I think it's the right thing to do. Oh, no, for sure. Definitely. In like you said, this is a slow growth. There's a yeah. lot of different entities involved. It's very complex. Everybody has to be, everybody has to buy into this program. Yeah. The, the, the bright side to it is that it's a hub for all updating of trail systems. I mean, and like you said, it covers yeah. all sports. It also covers all just seasons, six seasons and service issues, yep. you know, um, all those different en entities and organizations. You know, the other thing it does that I'm super proud of, is we built this community calendar because not only do we want to cross pollinate all the groups together for a good activity on a trail, we also want to support all these groups in yeah. some way. So before COVID, right, people used to have fundraisers, film festivals for their local organizations and groups, right, to raise money for their own nonprofits. Uh, we used to have work parties where we'd volunteer and go out and do trail maintenance and trail building and stuff, right? That was the thing of the past. <laughs> well, when that happens again, 
the app will be ready for that, right? Yeah. And what I love about it is like, let's say you were a member of the Evergreen Mountain Bike Alliance. Mm -hmm. Well, you got to see that on your Facebook feed, on their newsletters or whatever, but that's it. Now, everybody gets to see that. So if I'm a motorcycle club member and we're doing a trail cleanup, everyone gets to see it, not just the club members, right? So what we're trying to do is cross pollinate this calendar so that more people attend the work parties, more people attend the fundraisers, mm -hmm. the groups are getting more work done and hopefully earning more money for their organization when they have fundraisers, right? Yeah, no, definitely. And, and not only that, just for like a, a network purpose, um, you know, individuals that have always thought of getting into mountain biking, but maybe don't even know how to get started, who to reach out to, right. um, you know, bringing the community together and, you know, we're better with numbers. Um, I think is, is huge too. I mean, numbers and attendance could increase dramatically. Plus most of us do more than one thing, right? Yeah, for sure. I snowboard, I mountain bike, I hike, I do all this climbing, whatever. So if we had it all in one spot, wouldn't that be more user-friendly? Wouldn't that be more yeah. efficient? Yeah, definitely. So I, I had one question when you're talking about, you know, conquering different territories, moving across state to state. Sure. So, you know, let's say you're established in Washington state and then all of a sudden Colorado hits you up. I mean, you've yep. done all the infrastructure, you've reached out to all the, the forest services, all the different organizations here in Washington state. What does that, how, what does that mean when you go across state lines? It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean anything different. The, the community in Colorado or wherever is going to have to do the same exact thing, right? The technology is built and we'll keep getting better with it, upgrades and more development, but they're still going to have to build those relationships in their own community. They're still going to get the buy-in from the landowners and managers. And then the, the local rec groups are going to have to buy in, right? Cause it's user informed. So yeah. it, it doesn't really change. Uh, it can be done anywhere. It's just going to take that community effort. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. Just you know, <laughs> cross state lines, do anything. Um, yeah. Cause I really, I really think this, this app, once you get everybody on board could really spread like, no pun intended, like rapid fire. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Well, you know, we've had a few conversations with some people at the state level, the governor's office and such that are kind of seeing this as maybe a economic driver for some of our rural communities in the state. You know, you might've been a logging town years ago, but that's dried up or whatever. People can come to outdoor recreate and they do bring their money, right? Mm -hmm. so, so we're seeing this as a way to also develop some of those communities across the state and hopefully infuse some cash into their local community so they can use that. Yeah. That's you awesome. know, the other thing we're doing is um, this idea of uh, stewardship tourism. So ecotourism has been around for a while. Like mm -hmm. I'm planning on going to some destination and I'm going to spend my money where I know they recycle, where they have the environment in mind. And so I'm purposely spending my dollar there. Right. Mm -hmm. Stewardship tourism is kind of new to me, at least. And that's the idea that when I go recreate, I'm going to spend my money where I know people are supporting the local trails that I just recreated on. Mm. So, for instance, let's say you, you came to Chelan uh -huh. and you rode a bunch of amazing trails up at Echo Ridge, right? And then the app has advertising, or will, doesn't yet, we're brand new, but we're getting there. <laughs> so soon in the next update, you'll see an advertisement for a local business in Chelan. And it'll say, you know, hey, do you need to do you need to spend money in town? Here are the places in town that we recommend you spend your tourism dollar. And then here's why. Because mm -hmm. each place has a story of how they support the local trails. Mm -hmm. So now as a tourist, I know that when I go buy that beer from that brewery, mm -hmm. that brewery supports the trails I just rode on. Right? So we're not just letting anyone advertise on the app, which quite frankly is not a smart financial move, right? You should just take free money whenever you can, mm -hmm. but you have to have a trail story. Yep. You know, so for instance, there's a accounting firm in town and every year they take a day off of work and their entire staff goes out and helps maintain a trail. That's awesome. Our app would then say, Hey, do you need an accountant? We would suggest you go to this one. Here's why. Yeah. Cause your money comes back. To the trails you just played on and, and I, I think that's such a valid point like people want to see their dollars go further than the cash register further than just a transactional you know 
here's my money, I received something. They want to see how you're contributing towards communities, making things better. Um, and it, it just goes towards like a sustainability pillar, right? Like we, oh, need for sure. we need to become sustainable as an economy. And I think you hit it spot on there with, you know, tread the app. Well, like, you know, if I go to Moab and have a great time playing on all the trails down there, I do spend money in town that night. I, I spend money at a, for food and beer and the hotel I'm staying in, but I don't, I don't know where that money goes after that. If I was, if I was told like, Hey, spend your money here, here, and here, and it just supported the trails you just helped destroy. Like I'm okay with that. I'd love to spend that money there. So hopefully it, you know, it's that cyclical financial community building thing. Yeah, no, definitely. That's awesome. I, I can't wait till that edition comes to the app. And then I have another question for you. So your background wasn't always in building trails. So tell me a little bit about your story, how you got started. Well, I don't, my story is windy and twisty. I mean, I used to work, I used to, I used to be a firefighter. I used to work for the forest service and fight fires and things like that. I guess that's why I learned how to use a tool and use a chainsaw and build a fire line, which is basically a trail, right? Yeah. And then, uh, gosh, almost 20 years ago, I got involved with mountain biking and helped form the current uh, chapter of Central Washington Evergreen, which was the first wow. chapter in the state. So we got to grow that. Now that organization has eight chapters across the state and is booming and uh, building trails and things like that was always kind of a passion of mine. Uh -huh. and, um, Actually, I'm a recovering illegal trail builder. I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so like, hey, go, hi, I'm Matt. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Matt. I used to build illegal trails. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. But well, that was always done in the, on the side. You know, I was a, a principal. That's how I met your wife. You know, hired her as a teacher and at the elementary school there and things like that. And then eventually just realized that uh, I want to do this full time and I want to support the whole outdoor rec industry and, and how could we do that? And it just kind of fell in place, started as a board member with this idea and then became the executive director of trade. Man, that, that's, that's amazing. So a lot of people um, are, you know, having a difficult time with COVID through health and wellness. So oh, yeah. um, you were a principal and all of a sudden you realize like, Hey, I want to like my sole purpose in life is to, you know, be outside, build trails, what was it that really pushed you to say, Hey, this is what I got to do to maybe influence some people out there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't think my story is a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had a little bit of a health scare to be honest. Oh, okay. So, uh, my, uh, job was pretty stressful and maybe I, I wasn't as good as at handling that stress <laughs> as I should have been. But, uh, yeah, I had some, uh, blood pressure issues and, was in kind of danger of having a stroke and decided that rather than uh, stay in a more stressful job like that and take pills, which I hate taking, you know, I don't want to take medication. Yeah. yeah. But I need to uh, uh, go a different, different way and get outside back to nature. So Man. it was really poor health that made me <laughs> jump ship. So here's, here's advice to your listeners. Uh, stay outside and play, find jobs in the outdoors. Don't ever have a stroke. <laughs> have fun stay active be yeah. healthy do what you love follow it stay active go outside that's awesome so um you know i, I guess we can kind of wrap up the uh the interview but so if, if people want to get involved like you already talked about the app but like uh, how can people get involved with the trail systems either through tread or not through tread um do you have any educational um resources for them here in the valley or maybe sure. yeah i think I think, you know, one, once we have all those that we're out of COVID and we can actually do stuff again, you know, attending whatever group you're interested, attending their stuff is where you meet people, right? So helping out on trails and going and volunteering or going to some fundraiser or whatever. Also, you know, check out uh, the different groups have, have different things going on. So some people like lead rides, you know, road rides, if you're a road, road rider or mountain bike rides, you know, you can... You can join these events. All these clubs and groups are looking to bring more people into their organization and they love taking people out. You know, like the Rowan Paddle Club, every Tuesday morning, they want to take somebody that's never been on the water out and here's your boat and here's your vest and 
we have guides to take you. I think a lot of people are hesitant because they always think like, oh, I suck. I'm not good. I'll slow everybody down. It'll be embarrassing. I don't want to go. Mm-hmm. But what you don't understand is that's what these groups are looking for because yeah. they want more people to, to enjoy what they are enjoying. And we all sucked the first time, right? Mm-hmm. Like you nobody know, was great the first time. <laughs> so come out, like take a risk, get outside. I mean, your health and your mental health, especially now, go outside. I mean, that's all we can do, right? Let's go. I have a, I have a story to relate to that. So um, I was, I was hiking up um, Asgard Pass, I'd say about oh, three years ago, yeah, brutal. over in the Enchantments. And I got to the top and it was the middle of September and there was trail runners just running through. They were just running by me. And I was just looking at them saying, wow, I would never be a trail runner. That just sounds so hard. Like, you know, hiking up Asgard or hiking up Kolchak is difficult. Anyways, I told myself, I reached out to a buddy of mine here in town, Eric Estrada, and I said, hey, I want to learn how to trail run. Like, I've always been a runner on pavement. I want to, I want to hit the trails. I want to gain some elevation. Started doing it once a week, and then we started running twice a week. Then at times, we started doing trail running twice a week plus a track workout once a week. And it's amazing what, what has happened over two years. Now I can go and say chills. Like, I ran up to Kolchuk uh, this last summer, uh, which is about eight miles round trip. But like you said, you, you, not, you're not going to be good the first time. No, you're going to be terrible. Yeah. It's going to, it's going to push you back. Like you're not want to, you're not going to want to pursue that after the first one, two or three times. But if you consistently come back and you have somebody to pull you up and encourage you, I mean, the journey is sweet. And when you start doing the things that you love, I mean, it, it, you really start to feel like you're on cloud nine. Yeah. And you, and you also build a, a community at the same time, right? So once yeah. you start a trail running, I guarantee you, you met other trail runners that you're now friends with, that you hang out with, that you have a beer with, that you go running with, right? Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's kind of beautiful to have that, that community around you. I mean, look at Run Wenatchee. Yeah. Those Thursday runs they do every Thursday, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people run on the same day because yeah. of that club and that organization. What a beautiful thing. Yeah. No, it truly is. Well, shoot. Well, I wish I wish the college. I know you're associated with the college, and I wish the college didn't drop their outdoor rec program. You know, that was like a killer. You know, maybe we could maybe we could form a. I don't know. We we need to get that back. Yeah. Because like I foresee a, a future where you know, like the the college has this outdoor rec program. We're taking advantage. The port maybe is enticing industry to 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 come to the valley. And, you know, wouldn't it be cool to have like a REI or a Patagonia or, you know, a bike manufacturer, ski manufacturer who does their research and development here. I mean, we have four seasons. We have all these beautiful assets, right? We could bring that industry in. We could train and educate our young college people into, into what it's like to be a part of that industry. Totally. You know, yeah. I'm just now thinking. Now you're speaking my language. It's a win-win, right? We just got to get it to happen. Yeah. So make that happen, would you? Do this podcast. Is we got to get a buy-in. <laughs> awesome. Well, hey, Matt, uh, I'm sure we're going to catch up off the air. Thanks again for joining. Everybody, uh, if you want to get a hold of Matt, um, you can access the Tread app at treadcw.com. Is that correct? Tread-cw.com. I will put it down below. Um, also, if you want to ask him any questions, we will also put his email there as well and his uh, social media tags. So Matt, thanks again for joining. Anything else that you got to input? No, thanks a lot, Daniel. I really appreciate it. Had a good time. All right. See you, brother. Have a good one. Go outside. Happy trails. <laughs>